Hello and welcome to the Banker's Tech Talk video series. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Zen Bainham Hurd, Head of Strategy and Markets at Blockchain, which is a Bitcoin wallop startup. Zen, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, pleasure to be here. So can you tell me what a decentralized financial future looks like? I think it will be more open and more flowing. Uh, and that's driven by a few themes we're seeing emerge today. One of those themes is the emergence of crypto assets. So these are a new asset class. However, we're going to see the emergence of existing assets moving on to a new digital medium, as well as the emergence of new economic actors. So what that means in practice is we have all these new assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum, which allow you to do things we can already do, but in a decentralized manner like money with the case of Bitcoin or computing with the case of Ethereum or file storage or who knows what in the future. And these assets can move between people peer to peer in a very frictionless way. But existing assets like stocks, like bonds, like money will also move on to this infrastructure because it's more efficient, it's cheaper, it's faster. And as a result of this, you'll see the cost barriers reduce which will mean more people will have more access to financial services and tools. So we'll see the emergence of new people coming online, going straight to mobile first technology, doing banking, doing custody, doing transactions from their phone. And the final piece to that puzzle is the emergence of new economic actors in the shape of machines uh, and things, which will soon be doing transactions and economic interactions and to facilitate all of this connectivity at scale, you need to have a more decentralized architecture that enables transactions to happen in a much more trustless way without the need for constantly going through central intermediaries. Okay, obviously there's a lots of buzz around the cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Um, you know, why aren't banks really comfortable with using them at the moment? I think there's a few reasons. I think number one, quite simply, Education. Uh, I think uh, there's still a huge amount of education uh, to be done within banks and other companies who have not adopted uh, blockchain technology or cryptocurrencies yet. And because of that, uh, a, a large amount of uh, effort has to be put into uh, understanding how the technology works. Uh, number two, I think banks, uh, quite frankly, haven't invested in the technology which enables these sorts of things to work. And that takes time. Uh, companies like ours have built infrastructure, and that's taken years and years to build up. Uh, banks will need time to build up this infrastructure. But I think in the long term, it's really a, a, a case of the, the fact that decentralized assets like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, by definition are, are decentralized. Uh, and that means essentially cutting out the, the middleman, mm -hmm. in this case, banks. Uh, banks make money from our deposits of assets, uh, from our transactions from our data. And in a more decentralized financial system, these things are taken away from the banks to some extent, along with their profit margins. Okay. Um, but also, it's the regulatory environment, isn't it? And so how is blockchain the company? How are you working with the regulators, A, trying to educate them on one hand, but also trying to maybe change their perspective on uh, cryptocurrencies? Sure. So we've been working with regulators since 2013. Uh, in the UK, in Brussels, and in the US. And most of that conversation has been around filling gaps in knowledge and education. I think regulators are very keen to understand the technology first. Uh, before that uh, happens, it's very hard to, to regulate something which isn't fully understood. I think the knowledge gap is certainly uh, reducing. Uh, and we see that with uh, things like the Crypto Task Force in the UK um, and the uh, Treasury Committee um, report recently, which was very detailed and, and showed that regulators have a really good grasp of the technology now. Okay. Um, and how do you help institutional investors really secure and manage uh, their crypto assets? So our company started out as a consumer-facing platform. Um, and that was really because this asset class was one of the first ones which was consumer first, unlike uh, most other emergence of new technology or asset classes in the past. And for that reason, we, prov we provided tools to make it easy and safe for consumers to use Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
And now we're seeing institutions becoming more interested in investing or trading crypto assets. And for that reason, we're building out a set of tools to make that possible. That set of tools includes products such as custody, that's storing your crypto assets with us, trading, uh, providing liquidity to uh, asset managers, uh, hedge funds and family offices, uh, research uh, to help people understand which assets are high quality and which might not be, and uh, also investment opportunities in, in funds which uh, we will be uh, working on. Okay, and my last question is really, do you think the cryptocurrency craze is going to continue? <laughs> I think uh, the innovation will certainly continue. I think what we've seen happen recently is the price has, has dropped uh, and the market has been uh, less volatile, uh, less up and down than it has been uh, earlier this year and end of last year. I think the reality is even though on the surface it might look calmer uh, or slowing down, under the surface uh, a huge amount of building and innovation is going on. It's like looking at an ocean, it's quiet at the top and underneath uh, a huge amount of things are happening. Excellent. Thank you so much for your insights, Sam. Pleasure.